and and this was a really productive conversation. Shout out to Brianna Joy Gray and Ryan Grimm for having this chat. Um, because I think that it's it shows how this could have all gone down in a different way. Uh, how we could have all just, you know, ar articulated our differences and maybe reached some sort of common ground, uh, you know, but it, it, obviously this isn't how it worked out. But um, the reason we decided we would still kind of cover this is because in order to ever truly move on, we need to really um, kind of feel like we're reaching each other and discussions are the only way that that happens. So instead of, you know, um, making, you know, one-sided videos, Gavin and I have had to have people on the podcast have these discussions uh, in person where you can actually engage, where you actually... Yep. Uh, have to, you know, challenge yourself to think from another person's perspective and, and you know, try and uh, move the ball forward and, you know, convince them of your argument also, but, you know, still be challenged by their pushback. And I thought that this was a great example of that. And so we wanted to comment on, on yep. the most recent Bad Faith interview with Ryan Grimm. There she, is uh, an argument. Makes the case. And I think this is the kind of the big argument that the left needs to wrestle with, which is our lefties willing to leverage their influence is Bernie willing to hold up a bill in the Senate are these people willing to hold hold up must pass bills that will and for a, a, a great benefit to the neediest people or are they going to cave because Democrats care about people and Republicans don't right and that is a legitimate conversation to have about something like whether to hold up a COVID bill for 15 I would argue and might later in this conversation argue that they should have but I can see an argument against it on kind of moral grounds and the gravity of what was going on in the country at the time Nancy Pelosi being speaker of the house is not something I'm losing sleep about and some people were arguing well it's just going to be some other corporatist ultimately after many rounds of it okay but Nancy Pelosi wants it to be Nancy Pelosi. And it's, it isn't no skin off my back. Maybe I'm no better, no worse if it's Hakeem Jeffries. But I know Nancy Pelosi is pissed off and she might be willing to give me some things so that she can maintain her status as the most powerful woman right. Democrat in America. Right. I mean, it, it's always a, an open question about, because if she's giving something, she's taking from somebody else. Like, so if she's giving Pago, let's mm -hmm. say, a full Pago, uh, stripping it out, done. She's taking from the blue dogs. Mm -hmm. And when you have... I support this. I support that too. <laughs> Take everything from them. Like, screw them. They get, a, they get as many votes per member as the progressives do. And she, and she has... So she's, she's got this balancing act. And so uh, you, ha you wind up in this situation where she can effectively you know, play people off of, off of each other. And so they, sh they, they should have played... more. It, it does not appear like they played... Uh, as much hardball as they they could have like i'm 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 totally there but it's also not the case that like the door was open and they could just like you know fill their bags and walk out well so would you agree then at this point that they should have forced the vote on january 3rd for something even if it weren't for a floor vote for medicare for all so maybe we won't we don't want to call it force the vote whatever it is right but they should have yeah, yeah no absolutely ab absolutely the the two the two leverage points are the vote on the rules package and the vote for speaker, like definitely like those are, like those those that I mean that's the only reason Pelosi's meeting with Jayapal and Pocan to begin with is because she needs them, and they 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 certainly did like try to use their leverage. I agree with you that they didn't um, use it as effectively as. As, as they could have. So now that we have Ryan Grimm on the record saying force the vote. <laughs> okay, wait, we can pause and re yeah. reflect on that part. Yeah. yeah. Oof. I think that he basically, this is what I, that, that, I think he basically came around to saying that that was an effective strategy. Yes. Oh, 100%. So that's, it, that, that's the thing about Ryan. He, didn't, he, 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 he did come around. He didn't dig himself in the trenches further. Yep. You know, he had yep. a good conversation. And that's what I like about the guy. And, and that's why I think he is a good faith actor. I think that, you know, he, anybody who's willing to, you know, and continue to engage on this in a calm, rational kind of manner is worth yep. continuing to have these conversations with. Because what the fuck do you want by having these debates if not to bring somebody onto your side? So yep. good on Brianna Joy Gray for, for making this point really clearly and basically in a way where it's undeniable. No, exactly. And this is like literally what a debate should be. It should be yeah. two people having a conversation and one convinces the other, or at least makes them see their line of logic in a way that they now reason with and understand. And that's exactly what happened here. And it's just, you know, it is refreshing to watch. And I like some, I like dramatic blood sport debate just as much as the next person. I like drama just as much as the next person. But when it comes to actually 
strategizing and, and getting to the end goal that we all agree we need to get to, uh, this is absolutely so much more productive. And, and yeah, kudos to both of these people for actually being able to have a reasonable exchange of ideas, an actual productive exchange of ideas. Uh, and it gets even better. So let's take a look here. Please, as, as, as they could have. So now <laughs> I want to ask you then about this other moment that caused folks, some folks on the left to become distrustful of you, which is that th the intercept uniquely, I think, is perceived as one of the most serious, like a real serious news organization that it has left politics. And so for that reason, I believe is able to, to get some pretty important interviews with progressives where they know they can come and get a fair hearing. Unlike when they go on CNN are going to have to answer questions like but isn't it isn't it mean to cut ceo pay or whatever so you have had access to these people in a way that most of us in the force the vote movement haven't and when you had an opportunity to interview pramila jayapal i know that i for one was frustrated that it seemed like you didn't press her on the rationale that she used to defend her inaction at that moment. Right. Which was, as a refresher, that she didn't want to risk Kevin McCarthy becoming Speaker of the House. The idea being that if you don't elect Nancy Pelosi somehow, the Republicans would have a majority that would enable a Republican to become Speaker of the House, which logistically isn't possible unless a bunch of Democrats were to cross the aisle and vote for Kevin McCarthy, because it's not a, it's whoever gets over 50% threshold, not just who has a bare majority. Yeah, right. Basically, as long as, and and I expl and the, the reason that like the Force to Vote movement knew this is because I had explained it to Jimmy Dore. Thank you, you're a real mensch. On, <laughs> real mensch. Well, he, you know, he reached out when he saw my initial argument. He's like, do you want to come on the show? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Sure, I'll come on the show. I will add, he never uploaded the video after agreeing <laughs> with me all the way through. This is not your, you, you, you don't have go, to answer you for your message. You should for get, this back guy. To, get to it I'll together. Go, I'll go back on. I don't uh, care. I will, I'm I will happy DM to go back Jimmy on. about having you back on the show. I'm, I'm happy to go back on. <laughs> he can call me all the names in the book, but he won't. He will wait until I'm off the show and, and then he'll call me names, which is what he did that time. That clip exists because Jimmy actually posted it mm -hmm. to, to dunk on Jenk. Because mm -hmm. Jenk had been saying, you're going to make McCarthy speaker. And, yes, and Jimmy George like, been. look, I had Ryan Grimm on, respected congressional reporter. <laughs> and like, <laughs> he said that that's not true. And so uh, functionally, basically, anybody who's voting against Pelosi, who's not a Republican, would have to vote for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Brianna. I'll speaker, do it. Speaker Brianna. <laughs> and, that, and that is then recorded <clears throat> as a vote for a person. And it gets added to the total. And so then Pelosi doesn't have a majority. And then it goes... And then it goes back. And so, yes, like, I, I'm, I will, cr I'll, like, cry uncle on that one, like, for sure. Like, if, if I had that interview to do over again, and she's like, but it's this difference between um, McCarthy and, and Pelosi, I'd be like, well, not, not on that day. Like, that's not, you know, that's not right. Like, basically, you'll go back to caucus you'll have you'll fight it out and either another speaker candidate emerges or you get your concessions and then everybody agrees and goes goes back to the floor and it has to be everybody has to agree because if the blue dogs are like no i'm not doing so and so or if, you know I, i'm not doing katie porter as speaker then she doesn't you know so but eventually they find uh, and you know it has taken days in the past you know to to find us to find a speaker so th so yeah Fair, fair enough. Like, yeah. I, I guess I like, like here, and the, and the irony is like, I felt like I was like doing a solid to the force to vote people by, uh, by asking at all about it because in like my preference at that point was to just was to move on. Mm -hmm. It had gotten so toxic. It's lots of people's preference, but I won't let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> we and so agree. then later I'm like, shit, I should have done that, and I'm getting dunked on here, and yeah. I, I just did. I just didn't think of it in the moment as like, as like the follow up because a, a lot of like my interviewing style. I'm not Mehdi Hassan, who's like listening for every word that's slightly off from his uh, from his interlocutor, and then just like grabbing onto it and breaking their leg with it. I'm I, in my mind. I'm like, which moves a lot more slowly than uh, most people's, and definitely Mehdi's, mm -hmm. and definitely yours. 
uh, I'm thinking of my next question. And so I need to do a better job of like absorbing the question and like responding. But anyway, so it, yeah. Like, well, look, what I would say is that my, my main frustration was, was that if you are really keyed into the arguments that are being made by the force of vote people, oh, I do, I do want to stay on that point for a second, which is that uh, with the, with the interview, I understand that people have different interview styles and it can be easy to miss a follow up. People complain to us at bad faith all the time about having missed something in an interview and, and people will probably complain about this as well. But if my feeling at the time was if you are really following and invested and have like respect for the case that the force of vote side is making, then you would know that that Kevin McCarthy argument was one of the most specious and prevalent arguments being used against us. And the second the word McCarthy, McCarthy was right. out of her mouth, it should have been like red flags. This is where we nail her. Like right. this is this is where it's going down. I would have been waiting with bated breath for her to try to like, use please, that excuse please, with me. Please, please, say please McCarthy. try to McCarthy me. <laughs> right? right. And that like and that there's an asymmetry. Like I, I never actually even wrote an article about this. Yeah, I and, think I was the only one in America who did. <laughs> <laughs> and and Sirota. And Sirota, and Sirota um, for sure. And so I I wasn't as attuned to the buzzwords as I should have. But this like, is the thing, Ryan. Even to though it's involved, like defining like right. my, well, all, all my presence right, at the like, time. To get yeah. involved yeah, I, I told, without yeah. knowing what you're talking that, that is that is in and of itself the sin. It's like leave the party. Like you, you, you're late for the party. You don't know what's going on. Just, just, you know, just go. It's That's like, fair. It's like, I, you know, it's like Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer slapping on a kente cloth mask and kneeling down and having lots of thoughts and feelings like they're going to come to the cookout and explain to me how to make potato salad. Just stay out of it if you don't know. Well, damn, she took him to task at the end there. Oh, you're still muted, by the way, Gavin. But holy shit, that was um, that was quite quite the interview by Brianna Joy Gray. She is a, a master class. I can't stand looking at myself with my glasses on. I was getting a little bit of a headache, so I started to put them on, but I fucking can't do it. So anyway. You look fine with the glasses, by the way. But yeah, I, I just I hate that it reflects what I'm looking oh, at in the glasses annoying. while yeah. I'm looking at it. Yeah. So I just I it's I'd rather just be able to see a little worse. But anyway, I thought that was just a masterful interview. And again, it was she basically got him, but by completely being nice and extending the line of reason and logic and having a conversation, but still completely dismantled the line of logic essentially and got him to admit that he had been wrong at the time and 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 that the strategy was right right yeah and good on him for admitting it right yeah yeah no i'm not, um, I'm not so, trying to dunk on no, him at all no no i'm not either i have done so much dunking on ryan that i feel like i need to go a little out of my way to be like yeah. this is exactly what i wanted from him the whole time right was to be like no this was a good tactic i don't care what his fucking criticisms of jimmy doris it could be like you know what i mean like that's yeah. completely irrelevant to me yeah yeah exactly so 